Hey there, my name is Mark from The Spark. I have a confession to make. It seems like I'm addicted to iPad stands. No, seriously. It's only recently that I've started this YouTube channel, so it's not like I bought them to review, but it turns out I've got about five or six of them, and two of them I actually use quite regularly. Is this an addiction? Is there a iPad stand anonymous I should join? Now, before you think I'm just collecting them for the sake of it, I do actually own an iPad Pro. It's a 12 inch 2021 model. I'm not that weird. I'm not just a Kindle scribe owner, if you've seen my other videos. What you just saw there were three out of my collection, and each one of them has a unique selling point, a USP that I think you might be interested in. When I'm out and about, I usually have my Magic Keyboard protecting my iPad. And in terms of a keyboard, this is the best I've ever used. Though I do have a quirky mechanical keyboard on order, and quirky being the manufacturer's name, um, video incoming when that thing gets here. Anyway, when I'm mobile, the Magic Keyboard does make for a really great typing experience. The best I've ever had, actually. Now, you might ask, why don't I have a laptop? Well, I do. But I've used an iPad for so long now, from the very first model to now, and I've, I've grown with it. I've adapted when the software was still quite clunky. Got used to using workarounds when I needed to. But right now, in 2023, I think it's pretty much all there. All right, maybe there's one or two more things I'd, I'd like to see in the next iPad OS, and maybe some more desktop class pro apps, as they say. But I'm not doing a video on that today. Just know that the iPad is my daily driver. I do video editing, photo editing on it, I, I script write on it, I write, art, write articles, and I use it for entertainment. It is a, a real productivity workhorse and an entertainment powerhouse. So I've got a good combo of uh, keyboard and iPad for when I'm mobile, but when I'm home-based and working, I like to correct my posture, have a larger trackpad to play with. And so I found that by pairing my MX Keys Mini from Logitech, I believe, and Apple's own large trackpad, because the trackpad on the, um, the Magic Keyboard is really too small, uh, together with a stand, I think it makes for a better working situation. Anyway, iPad stands. Let's get into this. The first stand we've got here is the Banks Infinity Pro Magnetic iPad stand, which you can buy for around £69. And you don't need a special case to use it. And that statement will gain context when I look at the Picata stand in a bit. The stand features a weighted base equipped with rubber non-skid pad, and the large magnetic backplate holds the iPad securely in place with a rubber pad to protect it from scratches. The plate is designed so that the iPad's camera remains accessible and functional even while attached to the stand, as do all the stands that I'm showing in this video. What sets the Infinity Pro iPad stand apart though is its two hinges, which provide an almost limitless customization of the viewing angle. Hence the name, I guess, Infinity Pro. With a hinge at the base and another at the magnetic plate, you can move the iPad to any angle you desire without worrying at all about the hinges loosening over time. The magnetic plate also rotates 360 degrees, offering even more customization for screen orientation between landscape and portrait modes. The stand's weight allows you to rotate the iPad around without needing to hold the base, 
and this has a very satisfying clicking sound when doing so. But you still need to hold the bass when adjusting the arm angle and it's pretty stiff. But this is a good thing as the iPad won't slide slowly down while in use. The Benx Infinity Pro Magnetic iPad Stand comes in the now typical space grey finish. Here we have the Char Gen Pro Magfloat Magnetic Stand. This stand has a base and neck made from aluminium and like with the Benx is very solidly made with again rubber feet so it ain't going to shift easily. The section where the iPad attaches has a magnetic surface lined with a microfiber material to avoid scratching. This stand also has a 360 degree rotation, allowing the iPad to be switched between horizontal and vertical orientations. But what truly sets the MagFloat apart from other iPad stands is its thoughtful, simple cable management. Forget about messy cables, the MagFlow includes a premium angled USB-C cable that runs discreetly through a hole in the back of the stand and connects seamlessly to your iPad. The MagFlow stand comes in, yes you've guessed it, space grey at the base and the neck with that fibre cloth plate being black. At the time of recording, you can pick up one of these for around £120. Now, there is something of note that I need to mention here. Even though the MagFloat stands higher than the Infinity stand, which should help with that aforementioned better posture, Char Gem Pro are also releasing a version of this with the ability to adjust the height and make it even taller. It's on Kickstarter now and will be called the MagFloat Pro. If you look around YouTube, you'll be able to see it in action from some other tech YouTubers as Char Gen Pro have sent pre-releases out for review. Maybe as this channel grows, I'll be able to get in on that preview action. Finally, this is the stand that I use the most. Mag Easy Stand from Pitaka. And actually, this really isn't about the stand. It's about the case that you have to use with the stand. The Mag Easy Case Pro is a top-notch designed case to work seamlessly with the Pitaka's Mag Easy Stand. Doing so will enable wireless charging on the iPad Pro 2021-22 models and the iPad Mini. And according to the Pitaka marketing blurb, this delivers charging speeds just as fast as a traditional wired charger, though I haven't tested that. Every case comes with a Pitta Flow, which is a compact charging pad. The case is quite minimalist in design and has this carbon fiber look on it, which complements the Mag Easy stand, which has a similar design. The case feels sturdy when attached to the Magic Keyboard and protects those parts that aren't normally covered. And it works perfectly fine with the Magic Keyboard as it also features the three pin connection. Now talking of connection or connectors, on the back of the case we'll find a big gold X which is the magnetic wireless charging connector. And the connection is routed through the case and connects directly to the iPad's charging port via a tiny pre-installed USB-C connector. And this works really well, but I do find it a bit fiddly when I'm wanting to use an external drive with my iPad. I have to pop it out put, and put the uh, storage cable in and then you have this little kind of plastic USB-C connection just kind of dangling there. But anyway, with that little grumble aside, you attach the case, you connect the case to the stand, and voila, wireless charging while working. So let's just talk about that stand a little bit. It's the same height as the Charge N Pro stand, around nine inches tall, and it's made from aluminium for the most part, with the head of the stand and the base made from a softer material, a soft plastic that won't scratch. 
As a useful bonus, the base also has an additional wireless charger, perfect for charging an iPhone or earbuds or anything else that uses Qi charging. The head of the stand doesn't have much of a degree of movement as the other two stands, but it can be turned to be put in either portrait or landscape mode. Its sturdy construction includes a hidden USB port underneath and it's got a well-balanced base for stability. The stand on its own costs around 78 quid, but then to use it, you'll have to purchase a relevant case for your needs. Like I've said, the do do an iPad mini case as well as the iPad Pro case, and this Pro case costs £64. So altogether, it is more expensive than the other two stands when you combine them, but like I've said, the case works well with the Magic Keyboard and provides that protection, and you can still use your keyboard to charge your iPad. On a final note, the strength of the magnets in all the stands and the case are really strong, and things aren't going to fall off when used as intended. So, what iPad stands might you be using at home? Have you got one of the MagFloat preview models and is it as good as the reviewers suggest? What does your home iPad setup look like? Okay, I hope you found my stand addiction helpful and I'm glad to be of service. You may have noticed this is a young channel, so I really need your help to grow. A quick tap on the sub button would be awesome and a like and a share of this video would make you a legend. All right, take care of yourselves and until I see you in the next video, keep um, standing.